Have I ever had negative thoughts? Who here has had negative thoughts? Right? This is what you do with negative thoughts. Um, and we talked about the 10,000 new thoughts a day. Uh, I cancel them. I physically, in my head, when, I, and I, I, I cancel those negative thoughts. And if they keep coming back, I know they're in the 40,000 subconscious thoughts, the negativity that's attracting it. So I start clearing my mind. And so not only canceling it, I go back to that meditation I told you. So if I, if I sit there at night and I don't want something to bother me, or I wake up in the morning and it's bothering me again, and I canceled it, I'm like, you know, doesn't matter. We all, and I'm working myself up. And I wake up in the morning, my stomach's tight. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm worried, I'm worried. I cancel it, then I clear it. I just keep saying clear. And I breathe through my nose, out through my mouth. And then I have a real, if it keeps happening, and this is more spiritual, but it works for me. So I believe that uh, the conscious is what we think, say, and do. So I'm very conscious about who I hang out with, what I listen to, what I think, what I say. Right? Attacking words they get attacking words back. Attacking thoughts, even more. Then you have your beliefs, right? And if I start in my belief system realizing like a lot of people like me, I made a lot of money, but I believed I wasn't worthy. Why? Because my mom made $17,000 a year being a teacher and I made $10 million in one year. And how could it be that this woman that was so much better than me, right? How could I be worthy? That's a, how could I? So I wasn't worthy. I had to change my beliefs. But then sometimes you have an unconscious competency and energy that keeps attracting that we're not even knowledgeable of. I'll give you an example. One of my problems in life was my siblings, I have five, very s smart. They went to the Ivy League schools, Harvard, Penn, the best in America, and never got a B, not one B. So I always felt that I wasn't as smart as they were. And then my grandmother, who took care of me, because my mom was working, I, I was hyperactive, I, I couldn't concentrate. So I tell my grandma I was bored, you know, four, five, six, seven years old, I grandma, I'm bored. And she would always tell me, only stupid people get bored. Smart people think of things to do. These two things, I developed the energy of inferiority. My ego said, I'm not as smart as everyone. So what did I do when I became successful? I try to make myself superior. I hire people that were dumber than me, Right, I come into a room and I want everyone to think I was smarter than them. Instead of now, I, I don't go in the room. Unless, if I'm the smartest guy in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Right, I want to be around people to help me like you guys. And, and I do this, well what did it do? It ruined my business because I carried an energy that was stupid. But consciously, I thought I was smart. I said I was smart. I believed even, subconsciously I was smart. But I carried this energy that ruined a lot that I was doing. So here's how I shift my energy. This is the unconscious side. If something really bothers me, does anybody have something awful that you still haven't gotten over? I had stuff from my childhood that I searched for, but you know, it still bothered me. It affects me, it usually comes out around family. You know, something, but this is what I started doing. I pictured that in my head, right? I pictured it right here, what I was most afraid of, being stupid, for example. I just picture it, I close my eyes by myself, and I'd find a light, any color light in that fear, and I cover up all that stupidity, all that bad energy, that negativity, and I cover it, and there's a big ball of light, doesn't matter what color, and then I think over here what I love the most, right? My eight-year-old son, my girls, my wife, my family, cheesecake, whatever I love the most. And I take the light, and I take it and I cover what I love the most. So now my, my eyes is closed, the big third eye that I'm looking at, and what I'm most afraid of is here, what I love the most is here, and there's one big ball of light. And then I would take that light and I cover myself. So my eyes are closed and I hold myself in the light. With all, and what it does is, is it, it calibrates my new thermostat. And I feel different, I feel, I hold that light there till I feel differently. This peaceful, calm feeling comes over me. And I also realize I need to do that every day. Because what happens is I'm calm now and it starts shifting my energy, but just like weights. You work out one day, doesn't mean you're gonna get stronger. You work out six straight months, you get some pretty big arms. Well, the same thing happens with your energy. Sooner or later, it just shifts. And unconsciously, all that negativity of what had happened to you, 
all the forgiveness comes in, the love, the truth, right? The truth vibrates the fastest. It comes out. So that's how I shift my energy. And I still do it today. I'm very aware of what's in my head. And I'm aware of what's repetitive in my head. I'm also aware of what's repetitive in my life. If I keep attracting the same thing, I start shifting my energy. Because I know we're not stupid. Consciously, we're making changes so we don't date the same guy. We don't have the same business problems. We don't have the same partners. We know that consciously. So it's either in our belief system or it's in our energy. So I work farther and harder every day to shift my energy so that doesn't happen. And pretty soon, all these energies align, your beliefs align with what you think, say, and do, and everything starts flowing, no matter where in the world you are, what opportunities you think you have or not. I've seen it, I'm living proof of it twice in my life. I mean, most people around me, they did not think you'd go to college. Right? That's, you couldn't afford to. I mean, it's, you know, but my mom, that, right, that was her dream. She, two jobs. When, we, when I, this up, you know, for me growing up, my mom's a teacher. Come home, pack my dinner in a brown paper bag, mostly peanut butter and jelly or a bologna sandwich. Take us out and she filled up turnstiles at night in the 7 Eleven, the convenience store, with greeting cards. So we would have enough to eat. She also guilt us into studying in the car all night. So I lived my life, you know, at school and then studying in a station wagon car until 11 at night. And then she wake us up at 5 a.m. so we won't be in any trouble. There was no way I wasn't gonna succeed. That was hard. Still gets me choked up. But there's no way that I wasn't gonna succeed. And so when I failed at the first time, the hardest part for me is to walk up to my mom, who I owned the house she lived in, and say, hey, mom, I screwed up. I lost your house. You're going to have to move. But don't worry, because I, I, I know what I did wrong. I just want to ask for your forgiveness. And she didn't care. Because what I learned about my mom through the process and my wife, all they really cared about was me being happy. Right? They, that's all they cared about. And I didn't care about the money. I had to learn it the hard way because that's what I was driven by. And the funny thing was, the only reason I wanted money was to buy my mom a house. It, it kills me to this day. When I was a little boy, I just wanted to buy my mom a house and a car, and I was going to be successful. And I ended up buying all kinds of dumb shit, you know, and I ended up losing my mom's house. There's a good lesson, though. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Losing all my money saved my life. I wouldn't be here in front of all of you. I wouldn't, have all the, I wouldn't be able to help anybody here at home, all the things I do, if I didn't lose everything.